Well, what's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great Taco Tuesday and getting ready. You know, don't eat too much on Taco Tuesday. Take it easy on Wednesday, on Hump Day, because you want to throw down on Thursday, Thanksgiving. And good news, you know what? Um... Mike and his sister are going to go to his mother's house for um, Thanksgiving. Um, you know, everybody that normally comes over there, of course, going to be with their families as they should be. So <clears throat> it's just going to be me here. But I am superstitious, and I truly believe in what you did last week. If it works, do it again. I got a big sub. I got a big sub roll. I, it's only going to be me here. I don't know if I'm just going to put the big sub down here and just have it there so we have it in place, you know, maybe put it in the freezer till we have another game and bring it out or something. Or if I'm going to just take like part of it and put some turkey and some gravy and just, you know, make me a small sandwich on, you know, there's no, nothing says I got to make the whole sandwich. I can make part of the sandwich. Yeah. That, that's we're gonna make that's what we do we make a turkey a turkey stuffing gravy sweet potato big sub or at least a third of it oh with gravy oh i can taste it now all right so we kill jerry jones and stephen jones we are forever you know cussing them out saying we'll never win as long as we have them you know going into the season everybody said the Cowboys screwed up okay we have to give credit where credit's due okay you can't just be that guy that's only going to complain about the stuff you did wrong you got to at least be balanced enough to say here's something you did right and it's funny because you listen to the talking shows that are now trying to tell you everything that the Cowboys need to do to win when all the things that they told us that we were doing wrong before were actually right and they were wrong. They're not admitting that. One of the big things that they killed us on was they talked about the offensive line is going to be so bad. Oh, my God. How are you going to let Connor Williams go? How are you going to let Lyle Collins go? You remember that? Oh, the Cowboys. They're crazy. Well, I want to do something here. I want to play something. You know, this is one of those things. I know a lot of you are sick of hearing it and things. But this is not to toot my horn. This is more of a teachable moment because you want to learn from Jimmy Johnson. <clears throat> Jimmy Johnson built a juggernaut. And how he built it, he told us. In this interview, I want you to listen to this because I want you to listen how he built the offensive line. It wasn't with number one draft picks. Listen, you're up and then James Harris, uh, Jimmy Johnson. Let me first say congratulations on getting into the Hall of Fame. Uh, watching that live on television, that raw emotion was just beautiful. Um, I have so many questions for you. I think about the only way I could get them in is to get a cooler beer and head out on, <laughs> and go fishing with you. <laughs> hey, Mark. But um, leaving the University of Miami and coming to the Dallas Cowboys, and at that time they were basically broke, busted, and thoroughly disgusting to watch. Having gone from the pinnacle down to the depths, what was that like? And the second part of this question would be, I uh, played football at JMU with Charles Haley and knowing the character that he is and all the personalities that you had with the Cowboys, how were you able to mold them and keep them focused on the grand prize, which was winning? Well, you know, first of all, you know, you know, people look back on it and, and they say it was an easy decision to leave the University of Miami. You know, but, you know, we had gone through four straight seasons where we played a national schedule and been on national television every other week and only lost two regular season games. And so we had a powerhouse football team and I knew it was going to continue that way because we had a great you know group of talent. And then going to Dallas, you know, Tom Landry is one of the greatest coaches of all time. Mm -hmm. you know, but, you know, they had had three straight losing seasons there at the bottom of the NFL at three and 13 because they just didn't have any talent. And, you know, and obviously there were some older players that uh, helped us, uh, you know, in winning our Super Bowls. But a lot of it had to do with, you know, I, I brought in Tony Wise, my offensive line coach. And he 
he put together what is considered one of the greatest offensive lines in, in NFL history. But he did it with a, a free agent defensive tackle, Mark Tuane, at left tackle. He did it with a left guard where the previous staff said get rid of him because he was too fat, Nate Newton. <laughs> we took a, a third-round pick, a 245-pound offensive guard. I asked Tony, I said, can you convert him to a center? He said, I'll make him into a center. So we moved Stepnoski to center. And then we took a seventh round pick, Kevin Gogan, uh, who had struggled his early years. We moved him to guard and took a third round pick, Eric Williams at right tackle. So, you know, those players hadn't developed, but Tony Wise was able to develop them into a great offensive line. And so, you know, the combination of having some great assistant coaches and acquiring a lot of talent with 51 trades in five years, we were able to win that Super Bowl. So it was a great feeling. Thank you very much for that. I'll follow up you about Charles Haley. Yes. He's a character. <laughs> he's a character. <laughs> he's a character. He is one of my favorites. Uh, uh, you know, Charles and I developed a great relationship after a few uh, rocky roads uh, there early in his career at Dallas. Uh, we had a couple of run-ins, but we, we really got together. You know, really, he came into my office after I had berated him a, a couple of times at, at one of the ball games, And he said, Coach, he said, if you will just get on to me one-on-one -on -one in your office, he said, I'll do anything in the world for you. I, I love playing for you. He said, but just don't embarrass me in front of the other players. And I said, you know, Charles, I, I, I may not always be able to do that, but I'll try but from that time forward, we had a great relationship, and he was a big part of us winning Super Bowls. Thank you very much, and how about them Cowboys? <laughs> I should have trademarked that. <laughs> so, you, you look, listen to that. There's not a single number one draft pick anywhere in there for the Dallas Cowboys offensive line. You know, you had basically... You know, Nate Newton, who was cast off by the Washington Redskins. You uh, took uh, Tuane, who was a defensive tackle. You took Gogan, who was a six-round pick and made him a guard. You took Spignowski, who was kind of an undersized uh, center, you know, guard, and made him a center. And you made one of the greatest offensive lines. So there's the whole thing where people believe that you've got to be a first-round draft pick to be good. Now, <clears throat> the Cowboys, of course let go Lyle Collins, and that's where they killed us and said, the Cowboys, they're stupid. How are you going to let him go, you know, for Terrence Steele? In fact, a lot of people weren't sure that Terrence Steele was going to be the, st the starter this year. I said last year, in my mind, I thought that Terrence Steele was our second best offensive lineman when t after Tyron Smith got hurt. I don't believe Tyron Smith was as good as he was the first half before the injuries. And Terrence Steele, if you looked at the Cowboys offensive line the first eight games where basically he didn't start the first one because Lyle Collins was there, it was those next, um, I'm sorry, he started the first seven games. And when Lyle Collins came off at first, they weren't ready to put Lyle Collins back in there. Not until Tyron Smith got hurt. And that's when the offensive line started going downhill. But here's an article from last spring when the rumors of the Cowboys trying to trade Lyle Collins started coming out. And they basically said, no, nah, you screwed up. The $14 million difference in salary between Terrence Steele, um, an undrafted free agent on a contract as cheap as they come, versus Lyle Collins, the sixth highest paid right tackle in the NFL. And all the news that Collins is on the trading block and several teams are potentially interested, there's a chance Steele takes over the team's right tackle spot. But is it worth it? Is the drop-off from Collins to Steele sizable enough to justify the $15.3 million cap hit he will carry in 2022? Or is finding a team willing to take his contract similar to what they did with Amari Cooper the correct decision? Well, nobody would take on that contract, so we ended up cutting him and taking a... Uh, dead money hit quick disclaimer Collins is a better player anyone who argues Steele is an upgraded right tackle would be misguided and based on what we saw in 21 that's not true I guess I'm misguided then because I said you know let 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 Collins go let him go 
to put it in perspective, Collins was the 15th ranked tackle by pro football uh, football grading, and Steele was 58. There's no debate that the LSU lineman is better. I, I don't know. Sometimes I wonder about pro football focus because they rated the Dallas Cowboys at the end of the year as the best offensive line in football. And I looked at it and said, we only we, we change the offensive line every week. You can't look at our offensive line the way we were playing at the end of the year and think that we were a good offensive line. We just weren't. We end up having Connor Williams and Connor McGovern playing time together. Beatis, people wanted to throw off a cliff. Um, you had Tyron Smith in and out of the lineup. You know, uh, Terrence Steele at left tackle wasn't as good as he was at right. It was a, it was a mess. But they said somehow we were the best offensive line in football, which just wasn't true. But there is not the question. If we look at their stats, what is the true drop off of pro football ranking alone? And given that drop off, is cutting or trading Collins worth it? Hmm. All right. Forget about last year. We're just going to look at this and say, were the Cowboys correct on getting rid of him? Because right now, when you look at Terrence Steele's contract, he signed a three-year, $2.2 million contract that had a $10,000 signing bonus. His salary is $765,000 a year. Now, this is the last year of that deal. He is a restricted free agent, and that means um, the Cowboys can tender him, which would be, I think, $2.1 million, which would be dirt cheap. Now, other teams have the right to bid on him, I believe, as a restricted free agent. But then the Cowboys have the right of first refusal. And if that is the case, I can guarantee you that there's going to be some teams that are going to look at him at the contract that he has and probably will make a bid for him. Now, here's the thing. Let's let's look at here for a second. Right here, we have Lyle Collins, who's with the Cincinnati Bengals. And we're going to go to the pro football focus rankings and stuff. So offensive snaps, 657. So he stayed healthy, 21st. Penalties, he's only got four this year, much better than last year. And sacks allowed, he's given up three. His overall grade is a 59.1. Okay. A little bit below average, actually. Now let's look at Terrence Steele. Terrence Steele, who is about $14.5 million cheaper. Terrence Steele actually has had more snaps, 645, which is 24th. Penalties, he's had one more penalty, but he's only allowed one sack, which is two less than Lyle Collins. You ready for the grade? Are you, are you ready for the grade? 70. He's graded out 11% higher than Lyle Collins, 70%. This is one of those cases, and there's quite a few of them that actually the Cowboys got killed for, for making this move. But right now, they're smelling like a rose. You right now look and say, Terrence Steele has got three years of experience and three years of being in the NFL. He's just beginning to scratch the surface of all the subtleties. And now you're seeing everybody, you know, praising how good he's going, like against combo blocks and holding down the right side of the field. You could literally be set at right tackle for the next 10 years. And at the moment, we're talking about this being pennies on the dollar compared to Lyle Collins. Lyle Collins, who was suspended last year for six games and missed the whole season before, who was $15.4 million cap hit. The Cowboys, Stephen Jones, got to salute you on that one. We should have trusted the process. And, um, yeah, the offensive line has been stellar this off this year and and that's something that you couldn't expect to say knowing that we lost two starters and that tyra smith got hurt and so now we're developing the next generation all right i got another huge one out there that nobody's talking about that we look back and say wow stephen jones cat boy he was right all right good people 
I'm going to go up here, do a little bit more work, and I'll be back in a little bit. This is for Tad Prescott. Leave me alone. This is for Cowboys fans. I wore your colors. Leave me alone in my mentions. This is for guys like Graziano, but most importantly, this is for my arch nemesis, Dominique Boxworth. Oh, egg on my face on television. He's got, he's got egg on his face.